welcome to Auto Animals. Today we're going to be talking about the Discovery 3. The Discovery 3 brought in a new era of off-road vehicles for Land Rover. Discoveries of old had solid axles, um, they were quite agricultural and they were quite basic when you think about it, but Discovery 3 changed that. It turned Land Rovers into or more agricultural Land Rovers into very plush, very more upmarket vehicles. So when the Discovery 3 first came out around late 2004, early 2005, um, it was quite controversial in its looks. It's a very big, blocky car. It's got the aerodynamics of a brick. And at the time when the green movement was uh, taking off and all these economical battery electric powered vehicles were all starting to come in, this was kind of going in the wrong direction for most people. It certainly flew in the face of the norm at the time. It's a big middle finger to the Green Party. So who's it aimed at? Well, mostly lumberjacks, reindeers, wannabes, obviously the beard is optional. Um, large families, people who want to go on holiday but they've got three, four kids and they've got a lot of stuff to take. Um, especially people with large caravans, if you're into that kind of thing. The best way to look at the Discovery is a utilitarian Range Rover. Um, there's not a lot of competition really in that sector. Um, most of the competition is a, a bit wet these days. Um, you've got things like the XC90 and the Grand Cherokee, but they're becoming more and more Chelsea Tractor as time goes on. Having said that, the Discovery 3 and Discovery 4 may be the last in line for Land Rover when it comes to more utilitarian 4x4s, with the exception of the Defender perhaps. Um, the Discovery 5 is on its way and for a lot of people it's got them worried. It's leaning more towards the urban SUV market. The only real competitors we can think of for a car like this are generally the Nissan Pathfinder and the Mitsubishi Shogun. But to be fair, all three cars are starting to aim towards that urban market. Now it's worth pointing out that um, this is actually my Discovery 3 and as you can see there's a few things on it that aren't standard. Um, but it's important to mention it because Land Rover isn't in the business of just producing a car and selling it to you and that's it. Land Rover produces a platform. Um, think along the lines of a, a Ford Transit. They produce a platform and you then customise the vehicle based on your needs. Now the reason this is important is because historically Land Rovers, especially when they get older, are the platforms for very capable vehicles that people like to modify. And that's one of the reasons why Land Rover's brand has been so successful. Um, the after support is absolutely fantastic. But there is the concern, as the Discovery 5 arrives, and even with the Discovery 3, that they may not be up to the job of surviving the test of time and being modified in the same way that old Land Rovers currently are. So we've established that it's a a big car, a very purposeful car. It's really tall, I mean it's nearly two meters with the roof rack on, it's wide, it's heavy, but when you put all those things together, what's it like to drive the barn, uh, sorry, the Discovery? Let's find out. So driving the Discovery 3, it's, uh, it's a bit like a truck. Let's, let's be honest, it's a, it's a big, heavy car. Um, doesn't drive like a truck so much like um, a Nissan Navara or a Mitsubishi L200, but nonetheless, it feels more like a truck than it does a car. Um, then again, that's has to be expected. And as such, because it's a truck, it's not completely composed in the corners. You'll find that if you're going around a corner with a bit of pace, you feel yourself almost holding on to the wheel um, so that you don't slide out of your seat and wrestling with it just a little bit to get it around the corner. But then again, it does weigh two and a half tons and putting two and a half tons around a corner quickly is never going to be easy. And something I have noticed for this uh, 2.7 litre turbo diesel um, is it's a bit laboured. If I put my foot down it, oh, it gets there eventually. It's, uh, it's a powerful engine. There's a lot of torque in this. If you want to tow trees down, that's absolutely fine. But to get going, it just sometimes feels like it's a little bit, little bit delayed. And that's not unusual necessarily with a large diesel engine like this. But 
But despite these flaws, really this car gives the competition a lot to worry about. It's a big, practical, high-powered truck. It does its job very well. Um, but at the same time, it is still, compared to the competition, a very refined car. It's lovely to drive at, uh, on the dual carriageway, 70 miles per hour. It's, it's quiet, it's composed. Um, it's a good highway cruiser, while it can still be on the farm working with all the other trucks. Now, one of the key features of the Discovery 3, Discovery 4 and Range Rovers is the air suspension. Um, now, basically, this is like regular su suspension, except rather than having springs, uh, you have sacks of air. Uh, the sacks of air are filled from a compressor underneath the car, and then depending on what's going on underneath, the sack of air is compressed and expands uh, to meet the needs of the suspension. Um, and what this does is it gives a very soft and compliant ride. Um, you'll find uh, Mercedes will also use air suspension. Something interesting about the air suspension, um, a lot of people look at the car and they say, oh, that hasn't got much ground clearance for a Land Rover, you know, don't you get stuck? Well, no, actually. Um, something not a lot of people seem to know about the Discovery and Range Rovers is that because it's got air suspension, you can make the suspension go up and down. There's a lever down here I can flick that will make the suspension go down so people can get in and you can load the back up. Um, you can make it go up for off-road um, and when you do get stuck off-road there's extended mode so when the chassis uh, detects that you've grounded out on something you uh, flick the lever again goes up into extended mode and then if that's not enough you can have super extended mode which will go up even further um, and it will give ground clearance that could rival most defenders it's worth noting that extended mode and super extended mode are not something that you can actually do yourself. The car will only do it when it detects that it's grounded out. Um, and you wouldn't want to drive for any distance in those modes anyway, as the car does become quite wobbly. Now, while the Discovery is capable of many things, one of the main reasons people buy them uh, is because of its off-road abilities. Um, yeah, okay, there is other vehicles that will go off-road, but Land Rover really has got a name for when it goes, when it comes to going off-road. Um, and the Discovery is a very capable vehicle. Um, I wouldn't put it on a par with the Defender. The Defender's capable in, in different ways. But for 99% of people driving off-road in the UK, the Discovery 3 is more than ample. Um, most people will gear them up and take them abroad. They will do expeditions, travelling with them, and they're just as capable there. Um, in the right hands, it is amazing what you can do with these cars. Um, that wouldn't be my hands, I might add. Now, when it comes to going off-road in the Discovery, which, let's be honest, is one of the primary purposes of it, there's this, this uh, ingenious little system called Terrain Response, which Land Rover have come up with, and uh, in essence, it's a dial, and you set the dial to whichever terrain you're driving on, and it takes the guesswork after driving off-road. Um, so there's snow, sand, uh, mud ruts, gravel. It does all the hard work for you. It locks the diff, uh, it adjusts the power, um, and it does make this a very capable vehicle. One of the other interesting points about the, uh, the Discovery 3, 4 and the Range Rover um, is the fact that they've actually got two chassis. Uh, so in essence, think of a, a typical ladder chassis that you'd find on Land Rovers of old, um, and then put a monocoque chassis on top of that. Uh, and basically what this does is it gives it the, uh, the abilities uh, and the setup required for off-road use through the ladder chassis, but then you've also got the strength and structure of the monocoque chassis to make it more compliant on the road. Now this is, this is great, um, but that is why it weighs two and a half tons. Now, unfortunately, Unfortunately, to counteract that two and a half tons, you, ha they, you have got the features such as air suspension. Um, and the problem with this is it's a bit of a vicious circle because on the one hand, you've got all this technology to cope with the two and a half tons, but as you add the technology, it adds up to two and a half tons. It's a vicious cycle. One of the main selling points behind Discovery is its incredible levels of practicality. Um, you can't deny this is a big car. There's a lot of space in it. Everything is, is big and the boot is cavernous. Um, and as a result, it makes it a very desirable car for those who really do need that extra space. Um, you could argue, why do you need a small van sometimes when you could have a Discovery? 
On the subject of practicality, this is a car where everything feels purposeful, everything's here for a reason, everything's well made, everything's got its place. Um, it doesn't feel like anything's been added just for the sheer hell of it, uh, especially when it comes to styling cues. It's a very blocky, utilitarian look. One of my favourite things about the Discovery is the amount of kit you get on uh, some of the models. Uh, this is a HSC, so it is the, the top spec, so obviously it has got all the toys. But there's so much going on here. You've got your steering wheel controls, you've got heated seats, electric seats, front and rear parking sensors, sat nav, um, all these great features. Uh, dual zone climate control, electric windows, passenger and driver's side. Um, Something I don't understand though is why Land Rover thought it'd be a good idea to put audio controls in not just the back seats, but the boot seats as well. Because everybody wants their kids fiddling with the radio. I, I don't understand that. The Discovery is a car that's one of those cars that looks better used. Um, when it comes out of the showroom, all shiny and glossy and clean, it's all very nice, but it's not what the car's about. Um, I haven't washed this for the best part of four months now, purely because, well, one, I'm not that bothered, but two, because of what the car is. It's not a car that you would necessarily polish every every weekend like you would your Maserati. Um, this is a car to be used, this is a practical car, um, which maybe you give the occasional wash when you're um, going to a social event, going to a friend's wedding or something. One of the drawbacks, unfortunately, with such a large vehicle um, is the parts and labour uh, servicing and repairs. Um, it is a big car, everything's bigger, uh, parts are more expensive, there's no getting away from that. So if you do decide that you want a Discovery 3, um, you really do need to be prepared to put some money to one side for spares and repairs. Um, most notably things like uh, brake discs and pads on the front. So this car will eat them for breakfast. Trying to stop two and a half tons is always going to be con uh, consuming on the brakes. Uh, additionally, suspension components. Again, two and a half tons, uh, the suspension components really do take a beating. Now, as you'd expect from a car of this size, um, you obviously sit quite high compared to other road users, and uh, I guess one of the main benefits of that is that visibility, especially in such a large car, is actually really good. Um, you see in a lot of cars these days very chunky pillars that can impede your vision, but actually looking around I can see pretty much everything that's going on. Um, as you'd expect, it's a very commanding driving position. So, what do I think of the Discovery 3? Well, in conclusion, it's the dependable old dog, I think. Um, it'll age well, it'll be around for a while. Just know when to take it to the vets every now and then, look after it, and um, perhaps know when to, to put it down when it's financially unviable. I think the best way to look at this is it's the ultimate Defender or Hilux for those of us who aren't farmers. Um, for those of us who do need a car that can go off-road and do things, but we still want the, the creature comforts of a, a normal hatchback. Now, there is this school of thought that buying a, a big, unsociable 4x4 four four will get you the wrong kind of attention and people will treat you differently, won't leave at junctions, give you a few hand signals. Um, but the reality is uh, everybody's an idiot on the roads these days. I don't think it matters if you drive this or um, a Ford Fiesta, you're going to get treated the same. The one positive there is, is the fact that this is a Land Rover, incredibly good heritage mark and support, um, and they will be around for a long time. So as long as you own the vehicle, there is no other brand where you'll get quite so much support away from the manufacturer. I think something else that's worth mentioning is, if you want to work the land day in, day out, and you want to abuse the vehicle, buy a Hilux. So I think my concluding point with the Discovery 3 is it's probably overkill for most people. I mean, if you need to tow a trailer full of logs or agricultural machinery, take the family of seven to the Pyrenees on a camping holiday, or even perform search and rescue duties, it's the ideal car. But for most people, I do wonder if they'll ever actually get to use it to its full potential. And don't forget, being a Land Rover, it's obviously the best 4x4 by far. Allegedly. Apparently. Perhaps. 
Anyway, um, thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and we'll see you soon. <laughs> Discovery 3 brought in a new era of discovery. Um, discoveries of old were fairly aggro- what? Said Discovery three times in ten seconds. <laughs> discovery 3 brought in a new era for the discovery, and the discovery discovery it. <laughs> right. It's blocky, it's like a, well, aerodynamics of a brick. And at the time that was very controversial as controversial f Car coming. <laughs> what was I saying? It's actually dropped. Oh, <laughs> I know, I, 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 I know, I, I know it's, um, it's, it's actually, right, you can lift it and it, so there's a car coming. <laughs> <laughs> trees down. Yeah. <laughs> How does one do that? <laughs> Strap a rope to it. You tow it down, do you? Do I need to do that again? No, but you don't, I'm just thinking, ah, oh, it's one for the outside. Yeah. <laughs> like, I really need another one. You've got a bladder like a f***ing terrier. <laughs>